That's more like it. Welcome back to Guns and Gardens. Well, San Francisco is done for, so today I decided to bug out of town. Now, one thing you got to always remember is to stay hidden. Whether you're in a car or on foot, you don't want to be exposed. And that means camouflage. That's why I came up with this, the Ghetto Ghillie Suit. I can't believe I almost forgot the double tap. That's better. Originally used as portable hunting blinds by Scottish gamekeepers, the ghillie suit was introduced as a sniper's tool by the British during the Second Boer War. Traditionally made with netting sewn over clothing and layered with strips of dark cloth, burlap, jute twine, and most importantly, local sticks, leaves, and foliage. Once completed, a ghillie suit offers remarkable concealment day or night. The ghetto ghillie is built on a lot of the same principles, but instead of grass, foliage, and twigs, we're actually using stuffed animals, pillows, and old trash bags. Oh, dude, hey! Man, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. You sure? I'm all right, no problem. Let's go. All right, well, why don't we take a breather? Let's take a word from our sponsor. Hello. We at Nuka Cola would like to take a moment to thank you for your continued support of our fine food and beverage. Like you, we have heard of the rumors that Nuka Cola is somehow involved with the recent appearance of super mutants on the wasteland, that our secret blend of ingredients causes aggressive gigantism. This is simply not true. Nuka Cola has been post America's favorite beverage since the beginning of the troubles, and it's just as safe to drink today as it was on day zero. In fact, Nuka Cola has become so popular that used caps have become common currency. It's like getting paid to open a bottle. We're so confident that our products are safe and delicious that we're introducing new Nuka Cola Quantum. It's just like regular Nuka, but with twice the calories, carbs, and caffeine and twice the taste. How do we do it? Strontium, the radioactive isotope with kick. Nuka Cola Quantum, look for the glowing blue bottle. It doesn't cost gigantism. Welcome back to Guns and Gardens. If you're just joining us, today we're making an urban ghillie suit. Now the bottom layer of the suit is just standard combat fatigues, but what you need to do is take some strong nylon netting and sew it to the fatigues every couple of inches. You then want to cover each spot that you sewed with some kind of shoe goo or a regular bathroom epoxy of some sort. The reason you want it to be so strong is because you're going to hang a lot of weight off of this netting and it has to be able to take it. The key is to use anything that looks like trash but can still move easily. And remember, you got to cover up any exposed area of camouflage or netting. So once that netting layer is complete, we have to consider one more thing before we start adding the camo, and that's some kind of armor or defense. Now a typical ghillie suit, which is used by a sniper, doesn't have much padding or armor. That's because a sniper is usually thousands of yards away. We're more likely to encounter trouble up close and personal, so it makes sense for us to add just the right amount of padding and protection to our suit. Using only materials that I found lying around, I was able to create a tough layer of metal and foam padding for most of the left side. So why only put armor on one side? Well, it's meant to fend off an attacker, whether zombie, wild dog, or human, but still allow for mobility and agility. Think of it like a shield, only one you wear. The benefit of this design is that you can use the armor to safely distract your foe while still dispatching him with your free hand. I also made an armored style vest using nothing but trash. I used a small piece of plate steel and a toilet seat, and with that, I've added another layer of defense to my ghillie suit. Whether it's small caliber gunfire from behind or some up-close melee, it might just be the difference between living and dying. It won't stop a high caliber rifle, but who's even got that ammo nowadays anyhow? The key is to break up all the lines that define the human form and try to look like a loose pile of real garbage, crap that's not even worth scrounging through. So avoid using anything that looks useful or valuable. To enhance this effect, be sure to mess up the materials using paint, spray paint, dirt, rust, whatever. Just remember, you're going to be wearing the suit for potentially a long time, so you don't want to be too oily, smelly, or gross. You just want to look oily, smelly, and gross. Dude, you're looking shaky. You're sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. This is rolling. All right, well, let's just do this. So the basic idea is you want to disguise the shape of the human form and really look like a pile of trash. 
However, now that we're at free of the city, we really don't need any of this urban camouflage anymore. It did its job. So really all we need now is our bug out bag and to hit the road. You ready? Dude, you, you sure you're okay? Dude, back off, back off! Oh man. Well that is really unfortunate, because now I have to find a new cameraman. Well thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next time for Guns and Gardens. We'll see you along the road.